What's going on folks, this is Jagos, and we are going to go into Gamergate as a marketing gimmick. The thing is, I've been following Gamergate since its inception. It started as a consumer revolt. Gamers, for the most part, have were revolting against the status quo of publishers, developers, and everything else. When they had the most power, they were about to do a lot of things that were going to change the gaming industry as it stands. And a lot of ways to undermine that went into a lot of the things that I've already talked about. If you want to talk about my gaming industry videos, I want you all to sit here, look at each one that is coming out. I'm going to sit here and do one more about journalism and possibly put that up. And then I'm going to sit here and work on this. But I wanted to talk recently about Gamergate because it is no longer a consumer revolt. It's a marketing strategy. And a lot of people haven't really looked into this because they don't even recognize how it's being a marketing strategy in any way, shape, or form. The reason for this is because you are given something else to focus on, and that is the enemy that you have to sit here and strongly oppose. A lot of my conservative compatriots or people that go towards right-wing political viewpoints, they kind of get looked into this because they don't want to see the systemic problems that are going on in any way shape or form nothing wrong with sitting here going against sjwism which is like the fourth wave of feminism and all of these other fights that have been coming up since like the first wave of feminism but i'm getting ahead of myself that's a different topic for another time i'm not here for the feminist fight not right now what i'm trying to talk about is the fact that a journalism scandal became this fight on a cultural imperial imperialist front and it was because not a lot of people recognize what was going on now publishers were sitting here and taking money from you with bad deals bad DLC etc 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 there are plenty of ways that we can sit here and talk about the problems of EA the problems of Activision, the problems of Valve, the problems of all of these other different places. And the main reason that I want to sit here and get into this is the fact that these problems have been kind of pushed to the side because now if you want to do anything in regards to like glorified escapism in any way, shape, or form, you have to deal with this community problem of, say, SJWs. What do I mean, though, that it's become a marketing strategy? Well, when you look at what Play Asia did in order to sell games, they sat here and said, you won't believe what the SJWs are railing against now. And so when anybody on the Internet is against a certain group or anything, they become the other. Now, SJWs did this with gamers when they claimed that they were gamers themselves even though they play different games and people have different expectations and nobody's gonna like like the same game 100 percent of the time i may like a game and then give it strong healthy criticism and debate when i go into a gaming community i talk about all this in the games and industry video that i just recently put up so go and watch that one if you want to sit here and see hear more what i am trying to say is that in order to distract you, publishers have basically funded the straw men that they sit here and fight fight for or fight against. Anita Sarkeesian became a straw man of a person. She became a brand uh, with the femi feminist frequency. She was paid by most of these people, effectively by publishers, to sit here and undermine both developers as well as gamers from going against them. And for the most part, it actually worked. Now she's not needed as much, so she's not getting paid as much. But you have this foundation for SJWism, whereupon the newest form of demagoguery, which I've done a video about, is being utilized so that people can't have honest debate or discussions about the problems of the gaming industry. Instead, they have to sit here and fight this big blot of group of people that are fighting against their interests in some way shape or form that's othering in some in all aspects instead of everybody being on the same page 
fighting against EA, fighting for better journalist, journalistic standards, we have to sit here and fight each other as well as everybody and their mom who is, you know, for video games. We got to fight them against video games and try to protect video games. I don't understand why video games need protection. It's more than a 40-year-old industry. There is no way that anybody is going to have a lot of influence, no matter how many times Anita Sarkeesian goes to the UN. The fact of the matter is, even if video games became an underground market, it's still very profitable to have some form of entertainment and escapism than there is in not having it. So, people sit here worried about all these things because she was in front of the UN. What the hell is the UN going to do? The UN is controlled by the United States of America. So people can sit here and try to influence the UN, but it's really not going to do much of anything to sit here and tell me what games I can play, promote because I'm a free speech. Or you go to Australia and people pay more, but they have, they do make more to compensate. But again, that's publishers trying to distract the public from the issues that are going on around them. Now, the reason that Gamergate became such a marketing gimmick is because it was high time for publishers to sit here and get off their lazy bums, sit here and throw some money at the problem, and sit here and not fix the underlying issues. Un underlying issues include DLC, microtransactions, you know, you have the workers that are not getting paid enough, such as what EA Spouse uncovered. You have all of these people that are independents. You have the growth of Patreon and Kickstarter for video games in all aspects, you know, adult games as well as any other type of game. You have all of these issues that are coming up because our society is no longer able to grasp what it needs to do in order to survive. And instead of talking about that, we talk about feminists. We talk about SJWs. We talk about everything under the sun. And the only thing the publishers care for is that they have some form of profit. Now, depending on if it's 1%, 10%, 100%, or 1,000%, that's a far different rate of growth for most people than what they can figure out, you know, in all ways, shape, or form. So... I want you all to sit here and really understand what is happening when you you get into the Gamergate issue and a lot of people start sitting here talking about, well, this is, I'm fighting for free speech. You have to be very, very careful with it because you're not really fighting for free speech. If you were, they can say whatever the hell they want and nobody's really going to really care. You know, if they have the power to change something, then it becomes your problem. And so I have to critique and look at publishers far more and that are far more powerful than the people that are being used to say, well, SJWs are going after this game, that game, and whatever. SJWs is not even a movement. It's just a label that is put on other people that you might disagree with because they don't like the same games that you don't. We've had this same thing in the video game industry. We called it fanboy wars. And this is exactly the same type of behavior that goes on in fanboyism. When you're sitting here trying to protect Sony, you're going to disregard everything that an Xbox owner is going to say. And then sit here and make that system sound the biggest type. Instead, now we have some kind of political theater Whereupon, if anybody disagrees with your entire industry, even though you're a part of it in some way, shape, or form, because you bought their damn system, everybody has sat here and made it their mission to sit here and put their flags in the stand and just say, well, I'm going to protect all the video games. Look, video games don't need protecting. They need people to play them. They need people to review them. They need people to sit here and do different things. Right now, publishers have way too much clout because they put their money into giving it to Anita Sarkeesians of the world instead of the developer pockets. Now, if you're going to be a part of that microtransaction nonsense, feel free. But 
I just wanted to warn you all that the fact of the matter is, in regards to what is going on, Gamergate as it stands is being used as a marketing gimmick. And we've had this same thing since the 1970s, whereupon we called it Fanboy Wars. So the war has not changed, it's just the strategy utilized is exactly the same and people aren't recognizing it. And I just wanted to give that warning.